we talked a little bit about it yesterday that this spread that you see a lot of teams five out. Right. It's we were running that. Right. The cutting game, the screening game. Even if if, if you go back and look, and I realize Colas was would get it on the block at times. Right. But do you see the similarities? It's sort of like what, what people are talking about, the new wave basketball, five yeah. out positionless, yeah. all that. What, yeah. Have you thought about that in your team, like your 93 team and 94 team and 95 team, how you played? Oh, yeah, no doubt. And, and more so even that team you just mentioned, you know, my freshman year, we had to play that way because we didn't really have a quote unquote low post scoring threat. You know, Dwight mm-hmm. Stewart was a post up guy, but he really was a guy that stepped out and faced up. Yeah. And, then, and, then, yeah. We, and we didn't have quarters for the first. 13 or 14 games. So we didn't really have that one guy we could just throw into the post to. So for us, five out was the way we survived and it was kind of the way we thrived in it. And even now, you know, like you mentioned, everybody's talking about positionless basketball. But I agree with you. You know, it's kind of the way we've always played. So I think when we watch it, we look at it as, hey, we used to do that. But when other people watch it, it's kind of like a, a new phenomenon of, of sorts. Do, do you, is that what you coach now? That, yeah, that. We play, yeah, we play a lot of five out. You know, we, we've got a bunch of small guards and uh, we've got a couple of kids that have good size. I got one kid, six, six. I got a freshman who's six, seven. Um, and I've got a couple of six, three guys. But for the most part, we're a five out team. Uh, we do try to come down to execute sets. But the moment it breaks down, we just flow right into our five out and, and normal. We're pretty effective. Right. Yeah. And get out of that. Do you, what, what from a mentality standpoint, that championship team and you know, it's funny. I always talk about how you guys leave, right, 95. Right. And it's almost an entirely new team. There was – Kareem obviously had redshirted that year, so he had been there but didn't play. And then it was uh, Big Tank, Robinson, Darnell, Lee Wilson, Romeo, and uh, John Anxcove and Reggie Merritt. Running the running the screening game and cutting game in practice, <laughs> so I felt like that. Uh, you know, we nine new guys that recruiting year. Can you believe that? 95, 96 with nine new guys, freshman, junior college. Yeah. Uh, so we had never experienced the mentality that you guys had. We had always just heard about it. Right. And one of the great things, you know, everyone had talked about how coach t- treated you guys like men. <laughs> it was like so. I get a chuckle when I hear about some of the stories just going on the road. Right. Like coach seemed to me, coach Richardson, like he just let you guys alone. Yeah. Like he wasn't messing with you guys in the hotel. Cause he, he took that approach with us early on. Then he realized we weren't as mature as you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but do you get that sense that, that your championship team was, was made up with some mature guys that took care I, of their business? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think we had guys who had been there, you know, my freshman year, we went to the Sweet 16. So basically we returned that same team, mm-hmm. you know, minus, you know, we picked up Darnell Robinson and Lee Wilson. So I think we had a bunch of guys that were serious about what it is that we wanted to accomplish or what it was that we wanted to accomplish. And we didn't really want to let anything get in the, in the middle of that. So he did kind of allow us uh, to kind of grow into our own selves and, and, and kind of police ourselves, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he also would, you know, would intervene whenever needed be. You know, if someone felt like they were maybe getting a little bit of the big head or, you know, stepping outside of the group. You know, the biggest thing about that group was that there were no clicks. You know, it was right, right. one through 12, one through 13, how many guys we had, not just on scholarship, but even the walk-ons. You know, we were all pretty close-knitted. That's one of the beauty things about college basketball, because even now, you know, we're all still very close-knit. And I think that's something that goes un- untalked about when you think about college athletics. Everybody thinks about the wins and the losses, but they forget about the relationships that are formed. Yeah. I, I even look at that team and it was it was a team like made up of leaders. Like you right. said, there was no it was like everybody you could talk to each other right. and correct it. Right. And and I think that's sometimes people miss that aside from like the talent on the court is how you build something to where you can address things in the locker room and get them right. Right. When you see it. But was there a loud voice in that, a louder voice other than coaches than others? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, Corey Beck, myself, mm. Cordes was more of a quiet leader, but he led by his actions and his work ethic. Um, you know, we had some older guys that had been there before Elmer Martin, who was kind of an elder. Yeah. 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 Uh, and McDaniel who had been there and those guys that had, 
seen what it looked like, you know, with Todd Lee and, and Big O and that group. So they knew what maximum success looked like. Yeah. And I think they did a good job of kind of cultivating the relationships with myself and Corliss, who were kind of the youngsters and just kind of taking us under their wings and, and showing us, hey, this is how we do things here. What do you remember from that run? There were a couple of close calls from what I remember. <laughs> the year that we won it? Yeah. Um, you know, I remember the Arizona game, um, you know, when we played them in the Final Four. Final I, I remember the, the Florida game at home at our place. They had Dan, Cro Dan Cross and the clerk and those guys and the Meat Hook. They were a great team. They always yeah. put to the brink. Uh, I remember, you know, Ole Miss was always a tough game for us for some reason because they always had some Arkansas kids. You know, we would <laughs> normally win the game, but it was almost like a war. You know, you felt really fatigued when you came out of that game. And then, you know, the battles against Kentucky, whether we played at home on Super Bowl Sunday yeah. or at Rupp, you know, those battles were, you know, epic. And I think it's amazing now that, you know, when you start thinking about the Arkansas program, where it was then versus where it is now, and, you know, in Kentucky, even now, who's experienced some difficulties, you know, people always talk about Kentucky, but people forget, you know, how great Arkansas has been.